piece of evidence. Much was made of the timing of the first shot. It was the one thing everyone agreed on, that it was the shot that killed Aquino. The recording showed that 11 seconds elapsed from the moment Ninoy stepped out to the staircase to the sound of the first shot. In government's version of the events, Ninoy had already stepped off the stairs onto the tarmac when Golman shot him in the head. But the Agrava Commission noted one important fact. The service stairs had 19 steps. How did Ninoy and his burly escorts negotiate the narrow stairs in just 11 seconds? This led to an even bigger question. Was Ninoy already on the tarmac when the shot was fired, or was he still going down the stairs? Dr. Raquel Fortune is the country's leading forensic pathologist. She has revisited the case several times. So given the number of steps, the question now is how fast? Do you think you can make it from the top going down? And he was not alone. He was known to be escorted by several men as well. And you have the width of the steps. And it's only enough to comfortably uh, accommodate two people. I think in all likelihood, Senator Aquino was not yet on the tarmac but still somewhere going down. Even more conclusive than the timing of the fatal shot were the voices coming from the stairs. In the Philippine national language, the phrase Akona means I will do it. And Pusila, in a southern Philippine dialect, is an order to shoot. The Agrava Fact-Finding Commission talked to sound experts who identified the men who spoke the words. They were members of the boarding team. It was a charge that the team members denied. Another important piece of evidence was the trajectory of the bullet. In the autopsy report, the National Bureau of Investigation, or NBI, clearly stated that the trajectory was downward, which supports the theory of a shooter standing at a higher elevation. This would explain, supposedly, how come uh, the bullet ended up with a hole here because that cannot be disputed. But four months later, government investigators changed their story. The NBI now insisted their first autopsy was wrong and that the shot was really fired upward into Ninoy's skull. The bullet then hit the petrous bone and was deflected downward to exit in Ninoy's chin. This new version of the NBI autopsy would support Marcos's claim that Galman shot Ninoy on the tarmac. Dr. Fortune disputed the NBI's findings. She says the Petrus bone was not hard enough to deflect a slug from a 357 Magnum. This insistence that the Petrus bone is so hard that it would deflect a bullet is scientifically unsound. The Petrus bone uh, is uh, not really that dense. So if this was impacted by the bullet, it would not deflect that bullet enough to force it instead to travel downward and out the chin. But instead, the bullet would simply go past it and exit, actually at a uh, higher portion of the skull in front. Dr. Fortune says, it is clear from the trajectory that the bullet was fired from an elevated angle. There's an exit wound on the chin. And how come there's an exit wound on the chin 
and the entry wound is somewhere here behind the head. In the end, despite anomalies in the bullet's trajectory, the Agrava Fact-Finding Commission decided that all the evidence pointed to a murder on the service stairs. And the only one who was in that position was one of Ninoy's security escorts. We indicted the government as uh, the one responsible and uh, declared uh, as uh, criminals those uh, who were involved. And so a case was filed against them. I, all in all, I think there were about 37 of them. And the highest ranking government official was the chief of staff, General Fabian Ver. Marcos certainly was not happy with the findings implicating his most trusted right-hand man. When we went to the office of Marcos, it was only for two or three minutes. And he submitted the report. And Marcos was telling us, I hope you can live with your conscience, uh, referring to that report. If the board could live with their findings, Marcos could not. In December 1985, Marcos's anti-graft court threw out the Agrava Commission's findings and acquitted all 26 suspects, triggering protests in the streets. The court also upheld Marcos's claim that Ninoy was killed on the tarmac by Rolando Galman, a hitman allegedly working for the communists. All the indicted soldiers, including General Fabian Ver, were reinstated and given back pay but their freedom would be short-lived. Two months later, Filipinos, fed up with Marcos's 21-year rule, finally reached the breaking point. A small group of soldiers tried to overthrow Marcos. When the plot failed, Filipinos massed in the millions outside the rebels' military camp to protect the mutinous troops. It was a four-day event that would be known all over the world as the People Power Revolution, a peaceful revolt that drove Marcos and his family into exile in Hawaii and installed Ninoy's own widow, Corazon Aquino, as Marcos's successor. President Aquino wasted no time. She reorganized the bureaucracy, including the Supreme Court. The reorganized Supreme Court reopened the Aquino murder case. The penalty of reclusion perpetua. In September 1989, the courts rendered a new ruling. Drawing heavily from the findings of the Agrava Commission two years earlier, the court found 16 soldiers guilty of the murder of both Ninoy Aquino and Rolando Galman. Those convicted included the members of the boarding party and Ninoy's escorts. Members of the commando team that shot and killed Galman and their overall commander, Aviation Security Chief General Luther Custodio. The court also ruled that it was Corporal Rogelio Morano, the soldier who walked directly behind Ninoy Aquino as they descended the service stairs, who fired the bullet that killed the senator. The 16 soldiers were all given double life sentences, but the sentence still failed to answer the most basic question who ordered the assassination of Ninoy Aquino? Sixteen soldiers were given double life sentences for the murder of opposition senator Benigno